Welcome back to the show. Let's get my next guest out. He's one of the most consistently funny people in the country, a talented actor, writer and scourge of the tabloids. Will you please welcome Mr. Steve Coogan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Great to see you, Steve. You're looking you. very good. Uh, whenever I see you, I always want to go, ah, I want to go, aha. Do you get that a lot? Aha. No, not aha. You know what I'm doing? Play the aha. You mean, aha. Yeah, that's what we want. You get, you get to do it, get it right. Mm. Well, I try to get it right. Aha. It's like uh, when you were doing those pirate things before and you were trying to do R, but you couldn't do the R at the end, could you? <laughs> <laughs> it was just R. <laughs> We are at the end. You know what? We haven't got much time tonight, so thank you <laughs> for being here. <laughs> uh, great to see you. It really is good to see you. Hey, congratulations. Uh, I was going to talk about your life a little first, but I'm going to go straight to the movie because you know what's fascinating about you, genuinely, I think, is your refusal to be pigeonholed in your career. Okay? Uh, you've got a very successful career as a character comic. Before that, you could have been an impressionist if you wanted. I remember seeing you on TV shows early in your career, you did that, and you, you stepped away from that. And now, you're back with a very, very surprising, if one was to limit you to being partial, kind of a very surprising film. Tell us about Philomena. How did this come apart? I, uh, I, I found this uh, project. It was a story in the newspaper. I found it really moving. It was about an old Irish lady uh, called Philomena Lee who was searching for her son who was forcibly adopted uh, by the Catholic Church in Ireland 50 years ago. And the person who helped to look for her son was Martin Sixsmith, who used to be BBC's correspondent in Moscow and Washington. And uh, I play him. And uh, I found the project. And uh, I got together with Jeff Pope and wrote the script. And uh, then I, we, we needed someone to play the old Irish lady. And um, we thought, we'll go right to the top. So, uh, well, already, uh, hold it, already that's kind of surprising, <laughs> isn't it? Who would have thought Steve Coogan and Dame Judy Depp? You know what I mean? I mean yeah, that in a yeah, negative yeah, no, way. Well, it's, I was intimidated by and, and daunted by that, the, the idea of acting opposite Judy Dench. Um, I mean, that was quite terrifying. But, but actually, when, when I was on set, because she looks like this old Irish lady, she's got a wig on, she looks very different, she's got like a, uh, this overcoat, and she doesn't look like M. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, so, so uh, when, I, when, I, when I was uh, when I was a acting in the, in the scenes with her, I, just I was just having a laugh in between takes, you know. And it was just I just thought I was having a laugh with a little old Irish lady. And it was only at the end of the day when they, they transformed her back into that sort of with that shock of white hair. And I, mean, I thought, oh my God, I've been acting with Judy Dench. Okay, well let's have a look at a clip. We haven't seen this yet. Philomena, uh, I saw it and it, it was I thought wonderful, genuinely. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, her then of course, and she was stunning in that role, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but she's dead. Um, <laughs> uh, but did you do, you were doing, and this doesn't sound particularly wise to me, but you were doing impersonations of Bonds. To her, uh, The famous yeah. Bond, like, to someone who's actually been genuinely in Bond movies. Yeah. What were you thinking? Well, I just thought, you know, I just thought uh, she's a good person to test the veracity of my James Bond impersonations on. And you can do all the Bonds? I can do, or I think I do all of them bar Daniel Craig. Um, I can do all, all of them up to that, yes. Well, that's convenient. So the one she's actually worked with, you can't do. No, well, oh, no, no, she no, was Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. I can do him. You do? Okay. Would you like to hear Steve? Yeah! Uh, okay. Steve, I've got this here, and I thought, to make it interesting and random, this is a random Bond selector. Okay. So when I press this, mm -hmm. a different Bond will appear, appear on the screen, completely at random, and we would like you to do your best. No, you ready? Yeah. Wait a minute. The what, name's... What? The, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do this properly. Can we do okay, this properly? Okay. Roger Moore. The name's Bond. James Bond. The That's Lone Servant License. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's the, I will announce the Bond first, OK? Let's do that one. OK, okay let's do another one. I think that was pretty good. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> Sean Connery. My name is Bond. James Bond. Wow. 007 license to kill. <laughs> wow. That's great. That's better because um, I think most men think they can do Sean Connery because oh, everyone yeah. just goes, I'm Bond, James yeah, Bond. James Bond, 007. Yeah. They don't get the depth of the voice. Deep like that. Not like My name is Bond, don't. James Bond. <laughs> no way. You sound like a James Bond who's had a stroke. <laughs> Okay, you ready? Another bond. You know the way it works now. No, don't do it. Yeah, I haven't pressed the button. <laughs> so annoying. So annoying. So annoying. Enjoying so, this. Remember, 
I will press it, then we see the bond, then I will say who the bond is so people can enjoy him. I understand how it works. Okay, well, you haven't <laughs> really been playing ball. Here we go. I'm back. No, I'm not. <laughs> The back room boys. Here we go. I'm about to press it. That. Remember. I'm getting work. I'm warming up. Okay, warm up then. Timothy Dalton. The name's Bond, James Bond. Things could have turned out very nasty. <laughs> well, it's, it, that's, it's, that it's terrible. It's that not. It's terrible. not. It's not. It's not. It doesn't sound anything like that. Do that again. Okay. Things could have turned out very nasty. The name is Bond, James Bond, 007, nice. It's that Ian McKellen! That's not... <laughs> it's not, it was Ian McKellen. Well, say that was, again and say, all right, do that voice and go, you shall not pass. Let's see it, come on. The name's Bond, James Bond, 007, licensed to kill. That's Ian McKellen. No, that was Timothy Dalton, that was good. <laughs> that last one was good. Have we got one more? Have we yeah, got one yeah, more? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Pierce Brosnan. The name is Bond, James Bond, 007, licensed to kill. Top of the morning to you. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Nailed that one. Nailed that one. <laughs> Let's talk about Alan Partridge a little bit, because the Alan Partridge movie came out, and it did very well, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, it was funny. Would you do more? You must. I guess Alan Partridge is always going to be a huge part of your life, isn't it? Well, I, I was... I was, it was, I was petrified doing it because there was, so, the expect, there was huge expectation about it, a, 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 both good and bad. People were saying, was really looking forward to it. And there was also a huge band of people saying, it's going to be shit, right? Um, and so I thought, I've, I've, you know, it was, it was my mission to disappoint those people. He's an incredible comic creation, uh, and you revisit him every few years, and we see how his life has changed. Uh, and I'm wondering, do you think, for example, the current big thing in, in TV right now, the two big things still, talent shows, and, and certainly but the bakery shows right now, cooking shows are a big thing. Well, Could we, do you think Partridge would be envious of Paul Hollywood's success? Would he try and be, get a bit of that Hollywood magic on him? I think Alan would say that... Um that he admires what Paul Hollywood's achieved because he's shown that you can be uh, a heterosexual alpha male and still bake cakes. And that certainly <laughs> wasn't the case in the past. I remember the days of Fanny Craddock when she baked, and I, and I got an opportunity to taste uh, Fanny's. And, <laughs> but uh, it was a little tart. <laughs> see, that's why I want to see Partridge back on my now. <laughs> Uh, have you ever done, accidentally done, Al Alan Partridge's voice while uh, involved in the sweet act of lovemaking? Um, For example, have you ever shouted, back of the net, you know? When you're... <laughs> no, but, no, but I have walked towards the shower afterwards and gone, cash back! <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, congratulations on Philomena. Genuinely, I loved it. I thought it was great, and it's a real, it's a tribute to you as a writer, but also as an actor that you pulled off something as tricky as that and did it so well. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Steve Coogan. <laughs> After the break, I'll be joined by Jonathan Reese Myers. Paul Hollywood will return, and we have music from the Pet Shop Boys. Don't go away.